Oh my God, it's coming, guys. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming. It's coming and go-going. It's coming, it's go-going. I'm going to come so hard on the 30th. <laughs> Please don't say that. Please. <laughs> Esther can't handle it. She's going to slish and slash off that seat. <laughs> We're talking about our live stream show, which is Wednesday, March 30th at 6 p.m. Pacific. And we want you to get your tickets at momenthouse.com slash trash Tuesday. It's going to be such a mistake. Yeah, it's really wild. It's but you know, but so many of you guys have already signed up for tickets. Like, we're I know. So, do not miss this. this what is can not... we expect? A career low. <laughs> <laughs> Ultimately, a career low. A career high for me because I feel like my career is watching your lows. And a big <laughs> old come for me. <laughs> <laughs> we have plans. The and... things that I've heard that we're doing are making me so uncomfortable that I just can't help but grin and just we'll get through it. We'll get our bell for her. We'll see you guys there. Get tickets at momenthouse.com slash trash Tuesday and us. clear your schedule for Wednesday, March 30th. It's going to, you're not going to want to miss it. 6 p.m. PST. See you guys there. Hi, slugs. Welcome to another episode of Ow, That Hurt. <laughs> <laughs> My nose we is still it. burning from what happened earlier. Guys, some some sniffing happened. I don't And feel it was good. wild. There was running, screaming. This is a good episode. <laughs> but FYI, Annie and I are stand-up comedians, and we are on the road, and we are so excited. We can't wait to meet you guys. Wait. We're going to tell you where we're going to be. I'm going to be in Philadelphia, April 1st and 2nd. April 6th, I'll be in San Diego. Then I'm going to Austin, Texas, Brooklyn, Washington, D.C., Minnesota, Chicago, and I even added a date in Los Angeles. Get tickets at estheronice.com. Annie, where are you headed? I am going to San Francisco in April. I'm Ooh. going to Syracuse, New York in April. I'm going to back to Florida. I'm going, I'm also having a show in Burbank soon. I'm going to be in Austin, Texas. I'm going to be at a really fun casino in California. I'm going to be in Tempe, Arizona, and many more. Go to annieletterman.com slash shows. It's been so crazy. I have just started signing ball sacks, too. It's so, so fun. I'm a scrotum signer. It, you never know what's going to happen. It's been absolutely wild. Wow. I woke up this morning, okay? I opened the door to my apartment. Okay, I see in the stairwell, I see a dirty blanket and pillow and like a sack, like like there, it's like a human shit pile. And I thought, where's Esther right now? <laughs> Did Esther sleep on my stoop? That is so Esther vibes, <laughs> like a dirty blanket and pillow. So you, if you see that, you know I'm not far. Usually Todd kicking it down the stairs with his Yeezys and they're just like, Turds rolling out. I'm like, did you guys grow up with a binky? No. Um, is this gonna turn into dick sucking? <laughs> <laughs> how, how far? Are we I didn't from have that? a. I actually did. I don't think I did. I mean, I assume as a baby I had a binky. How long I also did you had my twin brothers. You know, but it's only a binky if you keep me. it around for years, right? I had a blankie. Yeah, blanket. Wait, a blankie then? That's a binky. Oh, oh a, a binky. I think is, is the mouth. sucker. Oh fuck. Yeah. I'm not from here. I always thought a binky was something like a, a cloth material you kept until adulthood. Oh, I That's had a blankie. blankie for, That's uh, a blankie. Yeah. Do you I like have that. a blankie? You're like teaching her English. That was cute. <laughs> that is blankie. Do you, you guys have blankie? blankies? I mine has has disappeared through life, but I had it for a long time. Same. I know where mine disappeared when I was at the hospital for a surgery. They my family it got lost there, and it's. A sore subject. There's like a nurse you hate. I know there's like a person's face you're thinking of. <laughs> no, it's my parents' fault. I blame them. Actually, no, I'm, I'm, I should take responsibility. When I was 11, it was my fault. Um, but my best friend from college, Lena, who is my age, 34, 33, whatever, she still has her blankie. Mm. I like that. I know. I'm it's like a form of comfort. I, I think it's like something maybe you could like give to your kids or something. But it's mine was like, mine was a sleeping bag that we got at Toys R Us that was like, <laughs> it was Care Bears, but it was very soft. Like it, I had worn it into softness. Well, that's why they're yeah. like, they're amazing is because you wear them down. It's just like a vintage softest blanket in the world. It was a, ra it was a rag though by the end. It was not. Wait, this is inspiring me. I want to get a, a shirt and I want to wear it every day and like cuddle it if I when I sleep and then turn it into a blankie shirt. Oh boy, just the pheromones. <laughs> the smells. <laughs> the stench of it all. I um, I remember my dad. I must want to call him and confront him. Actually, let me call my dad and ask him about my blankie. What he almost did to my blankie. Esther, 
Thank you so much. That was so quick. How did you do that? Esther, for you to get it that soft fast, you're going to have to have Annie and I wear it to sweat in it. Okay. Yes, so I think sweat sweats. um speeds up the the thinning and softening process. You guys, of we have to have the color bright. It looks so good. Look at the color. It looks Hi dad, I'm on my podcast. Say hi to Scotty. Hi Scotty. Squatty hi. body Scotty. He's all legs. <laughs> Um, he's nervous. Okay, they just asked if we had a blankie when we were little, and I just had a memory of, do you remember what you almost did to my fucking blankie? Almost made it into a teddy bear. He almost took my blankie when I was sleeping and made it into a teddy bear. I would have been... Sleeping, no. What? After you were grown, after you were like 12. Dad, 12 is you not grown. <laughs> That's when he's like, I sent you off into the streets. <laughs> when you were on your own at 13. <laughs> That's no, amazing. Annie, you I were want, grown. I just want to report one thing. Can I say one thing? Yeah. No. Yes. I noticed you carried Blanky with you. Blanky's gone, Dad. Oh, you're trying to out me like I still have Blanky? <laughs> These bitches still have theirs. This is a regression podcast. Wait, while we have your dad. Yes. Do you have any questions? Mr. Letterman, what is, I'm just curious, like, what do you think of, of Annie? <laughs> I think he is a an amazing human being. He is continuing to grow in in love and comedy, and I'm proud of him. Oh, as proud as any dad could be of his daughter. Absolutely. Oh, I love you, Daddy. Thank you for the slight verbal abuse as a child that turned me this way. Yes, yeah, we all need that. <laughs> I have no resentments anymore. I just love my parents. It's so cool. I was thinking that the other day with my mom. I was like, I'm not even mad at this bitch anymore. <laughs> I used to always be like a little like fucking bitch but I like let her read me some of her books she wrote and I want to tell you the big one is it's not about me <laughs> she wrote a book that did not have me in it at all how that like, feel hey. that is a problem not yeah. a little insulted. well she's still editing it so. no 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 no. if my name gets in it she gets a slap 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 no, no. no. she'll be it's struck in the 1850s it is in the, from the 1850s so you're in it dad <laughs> Well, I, I was a younger man then. <laughs> what year is your dad born? Yeah, what year were you born, Dad? Uh, 1941. Don't pause like that. That scares us. Uh, well, it's a little hazardous. I, don't want to use that. <laughs> I can't believe our dads because are peers. Because when peers. I go to the doctor yeah. now, they we... put your age at the top of the medical form. Yeah. It says 80. I thought it was just 80 pages of notes about what a psycho well, you are. More than 800 pages for me. Uh-oh. All right, I have to go, but is that mom? Yeah, just have mom say hi, because we have to get on with it. Hi, Annie. Hi, mom. Mom, Esther wants to ask you a question about me. I think I've already asked your mom this. But ask her again. Mrs. Letterman? Esther wants to ask you a question. You're on the podcast. I'm just curious, what do you, what's your current opinion of Annie? Uh, She has a great life. (laughs) That is judgmental. (laughs) That's very 3D, wow. And great friends and a great podcast. Don't, no, she's lying. (laughs) My mom said to me not too long ago, she goes, I think podcasts are so boring. And I go, I didn't know you listen to podcasts. What podcast do you listen to? She goes, just yours. (laughs) (laughs) I'm like, that's weird. It's the only podcast that talks shit on you. (laughs) I wish my parents thought this was boring. I'm jealous of you. (laughs) Her parents watch every episode. Anyway, I love you, mom. Love you. Bye, mama. Bye, dad. Bye-bye. I'll love you. Bye. Yeah, go find me a new blankie. Love you. Love it. We yeah, need to do the sorry, old. I covered my own face the entire time. We need to do the old men of Trash Tuesday and do my dad, your dad, and your stepdad. What do you mean? Or just like, Carlos? They should be. Oh, the- I was like, wait a mean. My my dad's ashes just sitting no. here. Oh, that's actually so funny and sad, but funny. So funny. Dad. We make it animate. We animate the mouth <laughs> to say stuff. <laughs> swim, bitch, swim. <laughs> Faster. Um, Annie, is that? A Louis Vuitton bag. It is. I was waiting for you to notice. Where did you get that? Tell us everything. I Can was I see at the it? mall and I, I made a decision once. I said, if I go into the store, I got to leave with something. Now, I'll tell you what I did to make it OK. Give it to me now. Well, please describe this whole outfit. Give us the. Wait. Also, this is a chic as fuck. Cool. Louis Vuitton. No, this I'm going to bring. Has. Yeah. Carlos's mom has it. Yeah. Then you know it's really Carlos nice. Carlos has everything. Like honestly, everything Todd likes is ruined because Carlos always has it. Like you a guys day have to him. teach me what the easy. Yeah, you'll be like, God damn it, Carlos. Has-. He's like, I can't get them. Carlos's family is a spoiler alert of the exciting only, things because they're so rich. The only they get two, the things first. 
Wait, the only two things in Annie's purse are Kylie lip kits and a passport. What's going on? I'm She's out of here, bitches. <laughs> I'm taking us to Bali. No. <laughs> We're going on vacation. I just like bring suitcases. Can you guys for teach you? me about purses? I would have no clue. I just I've looked, never bought a single like name brand purse in my life. I'm the same way, but I will say something holding this like the feels... the woman in me is coming out. Like mm. I, it love looks great it. on you too. It really does. It's such a little cute baby. I wasn't so I went in and then so what I was thinking was I wanted to like really be flashy for this party. So I went to the wait it, what party? Okay, so I went to the Independent Spirit Awards after party. Was not invited. Was like <laughs> I'm getting in. Oh, that's because you okay. I yeah. was in, well. I was invited by Bonnie. Okay, Bonnie McFarland was the head writer of the <gasps> Independent Spirit Awards. However, you're the only one that cares. No one else cares. <laughs> like, people are like writers. What are you talking about? Like nobody cares. Bonnie gave me like is, a backpack. It was the funniest thing. That's so badass. So Bonnie, there's so many pretty ones. Look, they're getting cute again. I don't like the brown, like the cheapest regular one is ones. Thirty-four hundred dollars. Annie, how much was oh that? This God. was not. This was like seventeen. Oh okay. This was. I, I felt like I was paying my old rent, and I'm gonna give it. I my the way I I decided to get it was. I know that Todd's mom will really want it, so I'll give it to her in like Aww, a couple months. I'll try. Cute. I'll test drive it for her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I I wanted to go to this awards ceremony, and we were at the mall. And I just like, I, I always know I'm going to find the outfit I want. And I found this was like, this was not that expensive, but I found this at Nordstrom's. My stockings are showing. I'm wearing green shorts because I thought maybe you could green screen something cool coming out of my badge. Uh, She's never not thinking. I'm always, there's always something. Um, but then, yeah, so I just got this outfit and um, Bonnie was like, yeah, come just say that you guys are writers. And I was like, say we're writers to the movie star place. So Todd and I show up. And it's like, you know, it's full confidence to get into something you're not invited to. So we're like full confidence. Todd's wearing jeans. I'm like, Todd, you do. It, Todd looked like a pilot on his day off. <laughs> he had like a nice jacket with like fur, but it was like, he looked like he was like. Pilot on the day off is kind of a look. That's... I did get wet just saying that, honestly. I got <laughs> yeah. really horny. There's going to be a little sticky spot on the Why is chair. that so hot? Like. There's something I've there. definitely tried to fuck pilots before. Like I've been at the, I've been, I've, I've left feelers like at the. They've never been on my radar. I They're never why. hot. I feel like you always, I. You have to be in first class. You're closer to them. <laughs> Here's what I think about men in uniform is, is like you can't fall in love with them while they're in uniform because you have no idea or you can't like suss out their style in real yeah, life. Like what if they, fixed. I know, but what if they show up to your date in like on ironic cargo shorts? Like in a dad style, like they the way your will dad wear oh. dad style. Pilots on off, they will wear dad. They are they're gonna be fathers on on the off. They also will have another family, <laughs> so you do have to consider a couple of those things. I have to say, the sluttiest I ever get in my life is when I'm leaving a plane and I look at the pilot and I go, "Thank you." Like I <laughs> and I, I go, "Where's your parent, little un unaccompanied minor?" <laughs> Like, where's your little um pass? <laughs> Did you ever do that? Did you guys ever travel like by yourselves when you were a kid and have to have them? They have to no, they have to like kind of babysit you. But it's so funny creepy. you should ask because you know what answer I'm going to give, which is that I wasn't a minor, but my dad pretended I was <laughs> so that he could go in with me and drop me off when I was probably like 22. Oh, I want to see if he can do that now. <laughs> I bet we, there's like you, paparazzi. <laughs> I bet he could still do that now. Yeah, I still, when I'm at the airport, I still will get asked, are you over the age of 13? I really want to, let's like, let's go out into the world and like test what we can get away with. with we will go far. We let's will go very it. far. I, I went to Indonesia by myself when I was 12. What? And I had a raging fever and I was miserable for two weeks without my mommy or daddy. Who took care of you when you were sick? Um, The team doctor. Uh oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> uh -oh. No. Get the bell, the monster bell. <laughs> cut, cut to the rainbow screen. We're having technical difficulties. <laughs> we should have a, like a molested rainbow screen that we can put up. Like when everyone's molested, it's just like a, like a sh bing, bing, bing. I had my own personal Larry Nazar. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Like, oh, you know his name. I don't pay attention. I like trigger. I Are you know kidding me? When I watch that documentary or anything involving it. those gymnasts, uh, you you must have been so fully. No, my though. sister and I just like I just we can't handle it. No, I can't watch. There's a show. There's a um, what was it called? Shit, it came out like four years ago. It was about teachers that bang the. I was like, 
I will die if I watch this. My head will explode if I watch that. What happened to me happened. But I remember what triggered me was the mother was the one telling the girl that she was molested. And she was like, no, 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 I like them. And I was like, that was me convincing my, I'm like, it's not okay for teachers to fuck their kids. It's not okay. Not that they're like that anymore. I love my parents who saw them, they're beautiful. <laughs> Wait, that is, so you guys just cannot watch something like that? Like it would just. Not if it's very specific yeah. to what happened to me, especially a team doctor. Yeah, if it's sports. Or sports shoulders. involved. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'll say this, I, that I was not molested Yet. like that, but <laughs> there's still time. <laughs> but I also feel very uncomfortable watching and hearing about that doctor, that famous doctor. Yeah. But at the same time, like I have so much respect for those girls. Yeah, who are, and it's an important story to be told. And yeah. it's like, it's just, <laughs> uh, Michael Jackson, he could be innocent. I never watched it. I have no clue, is he innocent? What's the documentary about? He's is not. it about how to moonwalk? I thought it was an instructions on how to moonwalk. I like blocked it's my It's horrible. Out. That's smart of you. I know. I just know from seeing comedians tell bits of it on stage. <laughs> I've just pieced it together where I, I go, I think he might have been a bad guy. <laughs> he might have been a bad guy. I wanted to say something about how like I am coming in with all this like expensive stuff because I feel like there's a qualifying thing I need to say. And you guys know this and a lot of the people that follow us know this, but some people don't. I lived in my car like three years ago. Like this is like a very big deal for me. I was broke as shit. I be did. I I had a little inkling that I could do it. Mm -hmm. Um, and I was you know, but I really just wanted to do comedy, so I wasn't willing to really change. But I used to, um, say Tesla twenty twenty. If you go back to my Mean Inspiration episodes, my solo podcast, you can see how broke I was. I was like on this little chair. There was like construction in the background. There's nothing I could do, and um. I do like to, like, it's fun to be getting all these things and stuff, but I do want you guys to know that if you, like, you know, anything is possible. But here's what <laughs> you... Oh, I, thought, I thought you were going to say, don't try this at home. <laughs> don't Definitely don't try this at home. Like, I'm not putting things, like, on credit cards I can't pay and stuff. Like, I am making sure I can do this. Here's and I do what have I, other And you have a business up. manager. I have a business manager. I have, like, a tour. Like, I have, like, Yeah, you're, you're I know hustling what I'm making, hard. Yeah. Yeah. Here's what I'll say about you that I really love is you have big no plan B energy. And that's what Bobby says. It, that's he, he always says is that that's what it takes to make it here yeah. is not have a plan B to be so just hyper focused on one thing and not think about anything else or how fucked up your life could be if it doesn't work out. But just be so dude. It's yeah. true. When I was in high school, I remember I was talking to my theater teacher, like just trying to figure out what my major would be in college. And I, he said something to me. I'll never forget it. He said, if you have a plan B, you'll use it. And I was just like, okay, that's out then. There's no plan. Is that B. after he jizzed inside you? No, this, okay. he, I, he not like, his sexual <laughs> preference, but thank you for. <laughs> How much does that cost these days, the plan B? I don't know. They used to be like, what, 50 bucks? I used to love those. I was like, ooh, I get a, I get 72 hours of jizz in me. I know. I go, ooh, three let's days of cream pie yeah, is yeah. what I used to call it. <laughs> hold on, hold on. It's like my week with Marilyn. <laughs> hold on. <laughs> hold on. Like you have the accident, okay? You have the accident already. And then after that. Then you get the pill, but you have 72 hours. Right, it's just cream pie, so cream, cream pie, like, cream let's pie. let's go. I, let's go, go. Can I offer? Let's go, go. Offer up a different perspective. <laughs> Isn't the plan B like bad for you? Like you don't want to just it's be taking fun. it. It doesn't no, it hurt. But if you're going to have to go through it already, you don't plan it ahead of the jizz. <laughs> <laughs> the mistake happens, okay? The mistake happens, you're like, oh, fuck, I'm gonna have to take it. Yeah. Let me enjoy my my last, it's like your last supper. It's just basically how Bobby describes like, rehab. I like surf and turf. It's, it's how Bobby describes rehab. It's like, I'm not gonna be the first guy on this planet to show up to rehab sober. He's like, I'm gonna show up with a fucking stop sign wrapped around my neck. <laughs> so basically it's like, once th the thing happens. That's like a really good Halloween costume if you guys wanna be Bobby with a <laughs> stop sign. <laughs> But it's a good point, Annie, and you know, probably very irresponsible of us, but it's a cream pie party. You have to look for the good, it's like what we were just talking about with money. You have to look at the good things. You can't yes. look at the negatives, okay? I'm about to fuck my body up with this pill. Might as well make it worth it. Might as well feel the 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 warmth inside. Oh God. The warm, the warm, the warm release inside. I think I just get so angry, and this is my own issue, but like guys who accidentally do that, I'm just like, you're not allowed. That's yeah. unacceptable to me. It does depend on their age. Like oh, so if they're like way older than me, I'm like, you had enough time. <laughs> <laughs> and those sperms are slow. We know you had a lot of warning. I have a really crazy theory that I'm just, or is it a theory or just a take? I don't know. 
I want to put this out there. I know it's going to be controversial. I think that no one should have sex until they turn 30 because I think that sex before 30 is never that good. You're insecure. I don't think it's worth your time. Okay, I agree with that. And I have been maybe even quoted saying that. But I will say this. Mm -hmm. I think now looking back, you need all these fucked up experiences. You need all of these not knowing what you're doing and stuff to build you into the person that can enjoy Esther, sex and can. Imagine being with just a bunch of 30 year olds who don't know how to fuck. What was like your 30th birthday? Like all your guy friends are like, I got you a present. It's plan B. They all, <laughs> they all come in two seconds. They have no cum control. Kay. They're all jizzing inside you for, you know, by accidentally. Then maybe, maybe, okay, pivot. But I like this. I know what you mean. Because it's like, you're maybe not emotionally ready for sex until, yeah. I used to say when I was 27, I'm not ready. I go, I'm not ready. <laughs> like, I really felt that way. What about we women, I mean, the real, the honest pitch is that you just don't fuck guys under 30. I think that's, but that is a problem. That will lead to a problem. I don't know, because I now have flipped and now I'm dating Todd, who's under. Oh my God, wait, that's crazy. Todd would be a virgin. I'd be waiting for him still. I'd be like, hey. <laughs> Patiently waiting, masturbating. Could you? Oh, by the way, I have a new term. Todd and I came up with this. Todd did, and I want to push it, okay? Instead of flicking the bean, because there's not good, like, jerking mm. off for girls. No. Giving a cookie noogie. Give yourself oh, a cookie noogie. Oh, that is so cute. Can we make cookie noogie a thing? I'm just throwing it out there. If no one takes it, I'm okay with it. Noogies are a little no painful. Attachment. It's, yeah, that's, it's. But we're not, we're, I'm not flicking my bean either. No, that... Flicking a bean makes no sense. Yeah, it's a soft little... Also, it's like turning on a button usually for me. <laughs> like plugging something in. <laughs> I'm a little lazy. Let's just say I skull fuck myself too. <laughs> it's not like I'm putting... I'm just saving it for when I'm alone. Imagine <laughs> if you were that type of masturbator that got off on like being skull fucked. So you would, you know masturbate but also you have to like blow your own the others you'd have to have a double <laughs> headed one and you're blowing it while it's going in you I wonder if it's that's like a, a human thing. centipede every time annie says double headed i'm just like i need to get my bell <laughs> i don't know why. i know i love you not having but you have a spray thing oh it's a, a you can spray, spray gun oh my god i brought something for us oh wait another thing i wanted to say about the money and me like being flashy and stuff right now it's also it's not I'm very excited about the money. It's very, very exciting. My goal has never been money. And I think that's one of the reasons it took me so long to make it. Mm -hmm. Cause I had to believe that I was like worth making money cause it was so far down on my like list of values. I just always wanted to be funny, tell the truth and like have fun. So those do not include money. Those do not, money does not necessarily come with that. But I had to kind of like retrain my subconscious for that. But the main thing that I love is like the connecting with the audience. I know this sounds like bullshit, but I, swear, I like love that we're reaching people. I love that that's happening. And it feels like an even exchange when I make my money. It doesn't feel like I'm not like selling NFTs unless you were on Twitter for that 48 hours. <laughs> that you got hacked. But like, you know what I mean? Like I don't, I have no interest in like tricking anyone or like mm. scamming anyone. Like I really want to like, you know, I just want everything to be like an even flow. Did you guys know that over 30 million women are impacted by weak and thinning hair? Why did you I, say it at us like that? Because we have thinner hair than you. <laughs> you said it so rude. No, you- Yes, no, I actually did, Esther. Do you know how many different clips and tracks I've had to put in my hair? That is why we've got you Love it. on Nutrafol. I'm on it. My four pills a day, baby. I my take it. Kalila takes it. Mm -hmm. Dave takes it. I think, doesn't Bobby take it too? We all take it. We yeah. all take thing. it. There's it's one like... person that we're not allowing to say they take it until the results <laughs> come in. <laughs> I was exposed to chlorine for so many years. So by the time I turned 30 and with some hormonal changes, my hair just started falling off and I never, like men, there's so many things about men losing their hair. They don't talk about women. No, you don't. I didn't even think about it until it started happening to me. Your hair ages. And then I think back when I think about my mom's hair has like gotten a little bit like the texture's different, right. but my mom's always had thicker hair than me. And so Nutrafol is my chance to Look, finally beat my mom at the hair game. <laughs> Look guys, it's all natural ingredients and this isn't an overnight fix. Mm -mm. This is some, and that this is how I know it's legit. If you take it um, as suggested, in a couple months, you really will see the results and your baby hairs will grow up and turn into adults. <laughs> well, first grade. <laughs> <laughs>
In a clinical study, 86% of women reported improved hair growth after six months, and more than 1,500 top doctors recommend Nutrafol as an effective and high-quality solution for healthier hair. And they're just vitamins. They're good for you, too. So it's like they also don't have that vitamin burp taste. It's like they're just – it's it's a win. I love them. I took them today before I came. You can grow thicker, healthier hair and support our show by going to Nutrafol.com slash trash to save $15 off your first month subscription. This is their best offer anywhere, and it is only available to U.S. customers for a limited time. Plus, free shipping on every order. Get $15 off at Nutrafol.com. That's spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L dot com slash trash. Attitude. I love attitude. But, like, I love the sheets so much. Yes. I have them in navy blue and I have them in a light green. I absolutely love these sheets. They're made from bamboo, which is very cooling, but so silky soft. As our well, own, our resident koala bear is very happy about this. Well, here's what people don't, don't know. Cotton is incredibly wasteful mm. and is a very damaging crop that uses dangerous pesticides and drains the earth's water supply. Um, and bamboo is literally softer, it's cleaner, and it's better for the environment. I think these sheets are way more breathable, too. I, I run hot when I sleep. Yes, me too. So these bamboo sheets are a godsend. I like to keep the wet spot right at the crotch area. I don't want it to be up near the neck and stuff. I definitely think if you're looking to invest in your sleep and having a nice experience, these are my favorite sheets. And I have – I've been – I've tried a lot of sheets, okay? You guys Wait know now. me. I'm a bed expert. And right now, you can get 20% off your order plus free shipping when you visit edituecom slash Tuesday, spelled E-T-T-I-T-U-D-E dot com slash Tuesday. This is Edituce's best offer, but don't wait. It's only for a limited time. Order today for free shipping and 20% off your order at edituecom slash Tuesday. And let us know if you like them. I love them. They're so soft. Remember, guys, bamboo is better in the bed. <laughs> You didn't finish talking about your party that you crashed. Oh my god, crash the party! Sorry, because I know I got a text. I got a text from Sterling Harjo, yeah. who um, is the writer and director for Res Dogs on Hulu. Go that watch won it. a bunch of awards. Like I was like, we so, should won everything, to, like, right? Touch. I'm like, do I was like, you should come on and break the statues and then leave the. Sta- <laughs> we want the statues. Can you imagine if there's just two statues in the chairs? <laughs> but but they won. They killed it. Yeah. Well, he texted me. He was like, oh my god, I just hung out with Annie. <laughs> Please have her send me the pictures. And then you sent me the pictures to send to yes. him. Yes, because I kept being like, I'll text her. But I was kept, I was like in a party. I was like, I'm Sterling, I'm not ready. <laughs> Sterling, I'm in, I'm, I'm still feel, I'm in it. So anyway, so we, we go to get in. Now, I don't know why it didn't occur to me that writers are not considered human. <laughs> <laughs> like, if you're behind the camera, nobody gives a shit, <laughs> George. Um, <laughs> no, but like, it was a fun bit joke um i don't know how this one finagles way on a camera <laughs> but um okay so we're standing outside we don't get in like we get the f- first round we get like a band and we're like oh we're one of the writers we're like okay great so they give us this band they check our vaccine cards we go to a next one they go okay your name i'm like letterman they're like mm, could it be under anything else and i go no it would be under letterman they're like david okay yeah and they actually like what's funny is they they misheard me and they go oh like Emily and I went no I just like can't lie like yeah. I can only lie so much you know so I was like no I was like oh I'm with the writers which was the truth and they were like oh there's no writers on here and I was like that's so funny because Bonnie hadn't gotten there yet she's like we're coming in a shuttle the writers come out still in writer gear everyone else is in gowns okay I'm like I look like I went to like Contempo Casual and <laughs> In, in 1998, but it's back, so I'm I'm totally fine with the fact that I dress like my exact 13 year old self. But so Todd and I are there, and Todd was wearing jeans, and I'd been like, "Don't wear jeans," but I was like, "The fact that we're not getting in, and you're in jeans, is like way better than if he was in a suit and right. we're getting in." But so we just hovered in the area that we had gotten into. Like I wasn't gonna give, I wasn't gonna go back out of like I wasn't gonna give another opportunity for them. So I just we stayed hovered in this area, and the security kept coming over, and we just I go, Todd, stand up. We're just, oh, we're just waiting for our supervisor to come, blah, 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 blah. They roll out in their backpacks. They have full keyboards. I'm like, you guys brought keyboards to the party. Like, you didn't think to, like, leave them in your car or, like, get hair and makeup to judge you guys up. Like, hats. Like, they've been, like, busting their ass writing this thing every day for, like, three weeks. So they're, like, so tired. <laughs> hats, I go, oh, my God, you guys are the ones that are going to, like, grab a fucking tray. We're going to have to say we work here. But, but Bonnie made it happen we all go in 
And, um, you know, I was like, it was hard because it was starting to get dark and it's hard to like, you know, wear your sunglasses in the dark. I was like tripping over things. And um, what's her name? Fox. Uh, Julia Gems Fox. Was there and I didn't get a picture with her and I want to fucking. She was, did you talk to her at all? Did I was you... going towards her and then I was like, you know what? I'm just going to get a drink first. And then she was gone. I should have mm. known she was just coming in to do a. Mm. I feel like Julia Fox would love you. I know she would, and I already had my plan. I was gonna go, never change. I love how you enunciate things. Do not change. Everything you're doing is perfect. And keep the shoes. She had the Kanye boots, and I go wear them every day. You think she'd do our show? Yes. She um, would be so, she would fit in so well amongst us freaks. Like, it would be awesome. I was so, and, and but it was a good lesson. I'm looking at everything as nothing's bad, it's just a lesson. And the lesson is you always pounce on it. If Esther was there, she would have poked me into her. I would have forced you. you yeah. force me but that's why you, we're a good duo at yeah. parties because i just nudge you because i am and you can't but pet. you also can get in like you can like climb into like I'm, crawl spaces and I'm stuff. I can't get you can i'm like you go over and talk to the kids no. that it looks creepy if i talk to them i sneak through the air vent i go around to the <laughs> other side of the party i come in i catch you <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no i really almost needed like a broom to sweep into that bitch but it was a. It wasn't embarrassing. Like I was like just stand. Like when people were coming in, and I was like, I was seeing people I know. I was like, oh hey, and they're like, oh yeah. I'm like, yeah, just waiting, <laughs> just waiting for someone. But then I got in. I saw Sterling. Was like Annie. Um, he's like, oh my god, it's me from because I remember from Bobby's yeah. birthday, and he's like, I love your podcast. So I was like, you got to come on. I texted someone. I don't know who it was. Maybe it was someone that doesn't isn't on the podcast. I just texted my dad. So let's try to get him on. But <laughs> next time. But it was so fun to talk to him. And like I was just watching people because I was trapped outside. I was watching. I almost had my own red carpet because I was just watching people's outfits. And um and then I saw yeah I just kept like seeing people like I saw one guy I was like you were on my Instagram like it was just fun like once I was in I belonged it was good. And um and then some guy came up to me. I just want to let you guys know. Trash Tuesday has gone Hollywood, okay? <laughs> because some guy goes, I heard, are you Annie Letterman from Trash Tuesday? I'm like, I've been working my ass off for 13 years. This is the only thing people know me from. <laughs> but he was like, I was like, he's like, I heard your voice. I knew it had to be you. He's like, sorry if this is like weird. I know all these things. I'm like, no, it's fine. I like it. And um, he works at HBO Max. So they're oh. watching. Hello, HBO Max. I don't remember your name, Mr. HBO Max. But if you do want to email me, you know my email. <laughs> That is so cool. That, was that really fun. That guy Sterling, his show is so incredible. It's the best. I was it's just so cool. I was just in Santa Barbara opening for Mark Marin this weekend, mm -hmm. and he was singing his praises, like saying how his oh, show yeah. is so incredible. Well, yeah. what I like is he was saying he's like I've been cast. I cast Bobby. He goes I cast Marin. Marin. Too. Mm -hmm. I passed Kirk Bill Fox. Burke. Kirk Fox. I was like, and I went. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> We're here. Hi. We gotta do we need to fucking guys, Imagine it's a show. It's a show about um indigenous people living in the res and then just all white people cast. <laughs> yes. No, the white people that come and ruin it. I lived in New Mexico. I lived that life. Do you think I wasn't the stumbling drunk white girl on the reservation? To ruin things. <laughs> Oh, but it was really fun and it was cool that everyone like knew us. It was awesome. That's like inspiring me. I want to like throw, I want there to be some sort of cool Hollywood party that the three of us can go to and be like, we're so I, cool. Let's just but make I a pack that we crash. Just crash all, let's crash all the parties. Okay. Because it's more fun. To be invited is kind of eh. No, it was amazing because it was like people did see us standing there. Because remember how fun it used to be, well, at least for me, to go into a club or a bar yes, underage. underage. No, what, I always and your, told, ID, your shitty ID works. You're like, fuck yeah. It stops being fun drinking once you turn 21. Right. Like, what oh, are you guys talking about? We're looking about? for a thrill. Oh my God. Esther's like, when I'm 51 and I finally decide to drink a lick of alcohol. Wait, look, it's award season, is it not? Yeah. Let's crash Let's some crash stuff. Let's crash all of them. Okay. Okay, HBO Max guy, if you can help us out with this. <laughs> you know that this all ends like with like Dave at some party and us just humiliating him. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, Dave's invited, we're not. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we come in and it's... He has a big jacket. I finally confessed to him this last night, but I have had this dream for years. But because of COVID, I realized it's probably never going to happen. But he has this weekly poker game that he goes to at this guy's house. And I, I've i always had like a couple mutual girlfriend, like f who friends who would could potentially be invited to his poker night. So I had this plan that I was going to dress in like a costume where you couldn't see me at all, like hoodie, whatever, sunglasses, and just like 
spy on Dave at the poker. Were you outside my house last night? <laughs> Taking Wait. a shit on my doorstep. <laughs> Esther, no paint the picture. So is he just hanging out with four or five of his, of his buddies and you're just going to be in a after, corner somewhere? Can I have a request to after this that you maybe tell your Vegas story again? Perhaps. Even though they, yes. And everyone watch your special too, but it's also. It's in my stand-up special. I don't even remember, but you. Okay, watch the special. Yes, but I did. I did uninvited show up to Dave's bachelor party in Las Vegas and it did not go over well at There's all. a reason there's no wedding yet. It's a, still a <laughs> sore still not sure. <laughs> still a very uncomfortable subject in our home. Um, but so the poker game is like a rotating crew, I feel like, of like eight to 12 guys. And, you know, I feel like there are certain people that will go who don't normally go. Like it's kind of chill enough that where I feel like I could show up completely covered and like hang back and this just completely so spy on and you play. understand your height is so a little away. that like <laughs> anything walking in your height everyone's gonna go what is that <laughs> whether your face is showing or not that's so funny you say that because this weekend someone referred to me on the street as a little critter <laughs> wait a random person just said that it, it was one of mark's fans like was like oh I, I, you were great and then she looked at me she's like you were great too you little critter you are oh. a little critter i i but know it's I, cute. I kind of like received that very well i yeah. like i know a guy um who goes by critter but uh -oh. he's like a big like mountain man i got scared like when you said i don't know why i was like i'm scared of what no, he's the come sweetest from sweetest <laughs> guy ever but his name is critter and he actually used to um, do a show with David Cho. Oh, wow. Uh, but you guys wouldn't make a cute duo. Critter and little critter. <laughs> critter and critter. Oh, she's a critter. Wait, Esther, do you know how to play poker? Um, no. I have not played since high school. Okay. It's <laughs> so it's been a moment. But Carlos can play for her. You'll be on a team. <laughs> I still team. have, the, is that a girl urge to be like, teams, I play a team in poker. No, that's very like, that's a scary thing to pick, to, you know what I mean? To choose teams and to not be the chooser of your own team. Oh, to have just someone Yeah, because, you? no, to be the last person picked on the team. Like, that's a big thing in my family because that's why I'm always a captain because I never want to be the last to be picked. So What'd I you say? You go, pick me, pick me, pick me. Pick me. Get it? That yeah. is, I, <laughs> that's a pick me girl joke. <laughs> I am always so comfortable in my zone of being the last one selected. Like You almost have made your whole life, like, let me just let you know I'm cool with this. Like yes. every every move you've made so slowly in your life <laughs> has been to go, let's I'm just gonna take myself out of this. Where yeah, because in gym, I call last. In gym class, of course, I was always picked last. I was the smallest, the weakest. Did they the ever think you were the ball and dunk you? <laughs> <laughs> I was always the girl in gym class who got hit on the head with a ball and then of course used even though it didn't really hurt, used it as an excuse to go to the nurse's office. Did you right. ever play dodgeball? Did you ever I played, but I she was, was in last. a dodge once. Yeah, <laughs> I just gym class was not where I thrived. Where I... did you thrive? <laughs> in the hallways, in the locker room, baby. <laughs> oh my god, in the locker. <laughs> I find hiding in the locker, looking through the slots at the boobies. I'm not even kidding. I remember being excited that we were all going to change together. You are. Listen, there's a lot of controversy in the comments that Portia reads um, <laughs> about whether you're really gay, and I honestly do not. <laughs> Don't know how to explain it to you guys. I've known her for over a decade, a decade and a half. She is looking at women's bodies 99.9% .9 of the time. It's such a, it's so, it's like, I refuse almost to comment on it because I'm like, my sexuality is my business and people can. It's actually our business. We split it. <laughs> <laughs> we split the cost. We split it three <laughs> ways. <laughs> um, I brought something for you guys to try. Get I'm ready. Mean, okay, I don't know if you are. Uh oh. Todd ordered, and I didn't even know these existed, smelling salts. Have you done oh, smelling fuck. salts before? These Did are you do rough. those for your swimming and stuff? Oh, Dave no. uses this when he faints. <laughs> How often does he faint? Every time he watches his podcast? <laughs> <laughs> Esther, you have a fainting? You have a fainting fiance? Would you expect anything less? <laughs> George is holding his hand. How, how do you administer it on yourself after you faint? Uh, I think that's a good question. He's maybe, faking fainting so oh, you go maybe away. Maybe it's when he's about to faint. <laughs> well, how often? What makes him so dizzy? So sleepy. He Are you has, telling him a story? Has, Is that what he's watching your special? <laughs> <laughs> he has health issues. That's not Should we ask him? 
Call him. What is the health issue situation? Have you have you ever tried them? The smelling salts? Oh no, I have a missed call from my dad. That is so not good. Why? No, I'm Dave has warned me that I shouldn't try the smelling salts. Why? Because they're really strong. Have and you... what's gonna happen? I don't know. You're I... gonna have an experience in life and realize you were fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I tried to use um my Esther and I had a conversation the other day about um trying new things. I tried to use that against her to manipulate her into hanging out later and it didn't work. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> you, you were like, don't. And I was like, okay. <laughs> she was trying to get me to go to the next comedy club with her. After, and I was, you. I was like, don't you want to try new things? She was like, stop. You I was were like, weaponizing With her little home. hand, her little hand. Hey, Dave. Yeah. So hi, you're, you're on the podcast. Annie has smelling salts and it made me think of you. Why do yeah. you use, why do you have and use smelling salts? Um, it's a great question. One I'm very happy to answer while I'm shopping at Gelson's. Uh, <laughs> Gelson's I, fancy. Hell yeah. I have a lot of trouble with needles and blood. Mm. And when I get oh. an IV put into me, I often pass out. So I need smelling salts to help revive me. There couldn't be anything actually scarier than passing out when a needle is being put into your arm. That's so actually scarier than the it's needle. Awful. Okay, we can change. Yes. Oh, look how cute okay. Dave is. Thank We're Google you for, imaging you. Thank you for the info. I love that um, that Dave's like thing that he needs for his health is you and Todd's like fun Todd night out. Todd hates it. It's just me. I go alone. Let me see. Oh, this? You mean? Oh, yeah. I thought you meant IVs. Yeah, I'm like, oh, do IVs bother you? I'm like, come on. You know, they don't bother me. The The one thing that bothers me is if I don't watch the needle go in. Have you tried it yet? I look away. I don't like oh, looking really? at it. I, I have to look at it because I have to know. If I don't know the source of the pain, then I oh get my, anxious. Okay. If I know exactly where the pain is coming from, then it makes sense to me. Then I can, I'm fine. That's interesting because I always think about that. Like with Todd gets really, really mo- did you, did you terrible motion sickness. I didn't know why. I didn't know you weren't supposed to open it. It's what they give to NFL players when they get concussed. Right? Look. Andy, I think no. people just do it before they go out too. I tried doing it. <laughs> well, the, the, I tried the self-driving Tesla and I did a little sniff and then I went, I'm not going to sniff too deep while I'm driving this. <laughs> I don't think you're supposed to smelling salt and drive. <laughs> I'm going to take a really, really big. Okay. Wait, hold on. Before you do that, Dave just texted me. If I use them quickly enough, they can prevent me from passing out. They wake you up. Yeah. When he's feeling lightheaded. Yeah. No, but this is like, Todd thinks I t- go to the coffee shop too much. So he's doing anything he can to keep me away. <laughs> He thinks I spend too much time there. I do. I just start chatting. <laughs> okay, ready? All right, you want to film it? Okay. Me too. I'm going to take a really wait, long... Wait, 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 can we... Someone set a timer for 10 seconds. I'm going to take a 10-second <laughs> inhale. I'll, I'll do it. Okay, ready? Set. Go. You guys, I am freaking out. I'm wearing this product now. I can't believe it. I was bragging at Ulta. I was at Ulta bragging. I was like... They sponsor my podcast. Everyone's like, please, ma'am, <laughs> leave the building. What are you doing? It I, love, is I love living proof. Living proof. I honestly, I don't want to be rude to other uh, dry shampoos, but you don't exist. Living proof develops game changing formulations that have raised the bar when it comes tailored to hair care performance. Unlike the other ca- hair care options, living proof addresses your specific hair needs and concerns like frizz dullness and damage and offers unique scalp care solutions because science in action equals your best hair i like that their thing is everything comes from the lab like it is the it's created by scientists so they are really creating the best formulas their dry shampoo it it just blows all the other ones it's out of the water like nothing it- it's so good. It's it's so amazing. And I, yeah. And there's no one size fits all solution when it comes to hair care. I know my hair gets really easily tangled, but their conditioner, I use the full. Mm. Oh, it's light and it gives me volume and it's exactly what I need for my dull, dry hair. I have to be honest in this, Ed. I have not tried the shampoo yet. I'm so excited to try it. I only use the dry shampoo. It's really good. I'm so excited. It just, it makes me feel so clean. I just use their intense moisture mask. Mm. Ooh, did it Blinding feel that. so, so, so good. My hair was so thirsty for it. And they also have the the, the vanishing oil. Have you tried that? Uh-uh. 
oh so my good, God. you guys. All it's these little the, like frizzy things yeah, up here. Because I need that. My hair no, has been. No, the vanishing oil. I swear to God, just a little dab and it takes all of the tiny little frizz. It's time to put science to work and unlock your best hair with Living Proof. Go to livingproof.com slash Tuesday and use code Tuesday to get 10% off your first purchase. That's livingproof.com slash Tuesday, code Tuesday for 10% off your first purchase. livingproof.com slash Tuesday, code Tuesday. Okay, this is our favorite our favorite new sponsor. I think this was made for us. It I was know. made for us. We're so excited. We're talking about Dipsy. Everyone needs an escape, but those can be hard to come by right now. Enter Dipsy. Let yourself get lost in a world where good things happen and where your pleasure is the only priority. Ooh. Dipsy is an audio app full of short, sexy stories designed to turn you on. Each Dipsy audio story features characters that feel like real people in immersive scenarios, so you feel like you're right there. And let me say something. I'm sort of tired of this all-out, explicit, visual stuff that I've been used to over the years. I actually want to feast my ears for once. Yes. Kind of scale it back a bit, bring it back to the old times where I just close my eyes and listen to... Um, a love story, a meet cute. It's a little erotica. I know. I think this is huge. Yeah. Like, I I don't know a single person that isn't like so audibly turned on. Like, I think words can really take you there. Imagine me driving over here with this Tesla, obviously hands free. <laughs> <laughs> you guys can listen to stories about hooking up with your hometown crush you never made a move on, or that coworker you always had a little thing for. You imagine not making a move on your hometown <laughs> crush. Imagine just for one second, not making the move. They release new content every week, so there's always more to explore no matter what you're into or what turns you on. And if you need to wind down, Dipsy also has wellness sessions, sensual bedtime stories, and soundscapes to help you relax before you drift off. For Ooh. listeners of the show, Dipsy is offering an extended 30-day free trial when you go to dipsystories.com slash Tuesday. That's 30 days of full access for free when you go to D-I-P-S-E-A stories.com slash Tuesday. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ow! Ow! <laughs> I think I need to wait. Hold on. What? <laughs> <laughs> I've never meant this in a better way. You are a beast. Oh, this is what happens when you have brothers and your mom has short hair and you're just trying to impress them. <laughs> uh, turns you into a monster. Would you like to try? I'm not going to inhale for Guys, 10. I'm oh my God, I like, can gonna... feel that in my mouth from over here. Come here, you want to feel it in your mouth closer? <laughs> <laughs> I feel amazing. Are they bad for you? <laughs> 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 You're crying hysterically. <laughs> Oof, that's rough. The ammonia is rough. Oh, is, let me give me, give me, let me see how. I, I think feel. I like it, but can you get addicted to it? To ammonia because it um, hurts so good. I don't think you're supposed to expose yourself uh, all day to ammonia. Todd wants it for editing. Oh! It burns. I know. It's well, just good, right? smell cat piss. It's the same. Queep, queep it into your pussy. Yeah, cat. Kegel. Put it. I'm actually not kidding. We're doing that on the live. Well, I'm gonna try. Is there a health it. benefit to this? Can I can I eat your queef? Yes, I'm gonna I'm gonna kegel it in, and then I'm gonna push it out into Kalila's face. I'm gonna get a bikini wax for this. Oh my god! It's supposed to. I'm in I'm in a very very unconditionally loving relationship, and shit is just getting left behind. <laughs> Combination of chemicals mix and release small amounts of ammonia gas. The ammonia irritates the blood vessels in the nasal passages, providing an instantaneous boost of strength, energy, and focus. What if it just made me attack you? <laughs> <laughs> and then I start fingering. You. You're just like. Ah, ah. <laughs> oh, also, Carlos. <laughs> but you kind of like it, right? But you kind of like it. But don't you kind of like it? Yeah. It's like wasabi. Uh, Esther, have you ever done a revenge hookup? Oh, a revenge hookup is like. Um, I'm gonna fuck your boss. I'm gonna fuck your dad. I'm gonna fuck your brother. I'm it has to be someone in their circle it, or in their oh, business. Oh wait, I had a memory. Someone that you know it's gonna really piss them off that you had sex with them. Mm. I'm here to say I've done a revenge hookup once. 
it's not, it's not worth it. It's you, you only. It makes yourself. you look like shit. It makes, it makes you, you look feel bad. bad. Yeah, it's like yeah. because all of that is again. This is like external locus of control, right? It's like wanting that person to feel a way about you that they obviously already don't because they're they've mm. already released you from their life. So then you're just there banging their cousin. They're like, okay. It was I didn't do a family so, member, but so like a peer. Is it like a so you just homie hopped? Homie hopped. <laughs> they weren't friends. It's hard to, to say this without being too specific. Uh, home, home, home to the hop to the. <laughs> <laughs> Esther, who? So you. Yeah, what was your story? You acquaintance was, hopped. Yeah, this was like years ago. I was super young and I got dumped and I was pissed. And there was someone. It, it, for me, it was someone I was interested in. And I, I part of my motivation, though, to like seal the deal right away with this person was like i know this is a little revengey but i it's not like i just did it for that reason but that undertone was there and i think that makes it like a negative experience it's like like you said like you don't get the result you want from it and you're just kind of like you're almost using yourself you're using your body and yeah i know it's like i'm gonna go fuck someone and it's like wait that was me i did i did okay so when i was like 21 I had moved back to Philadelphia and I met this guy and we like had hooked up and we we were like kind of like writing comedy writing partners or whatever. And we had hooked up and we're kind of into each other. And then he had just gone through a breakup with like his long term girlfriend and she hit him up and was like, hey, I want to like let's go out to eat like and see if we want to get back together or whatever. So he was like, what should I do? He like called me and I was like this. I was so I always bro down. I always acted like I didn't like guys I liked. I was so like afraid of being vulnerable and stuff for so long in my life that I was just like, oh, I don't care, like, whatever. I don't like you like that, but I was so into him, you know? So then he got back with his girlfriend and then I was like so kind of like ruined by it and we would still hang out and like, it was just so like, I felt so like, he didn't choose me, but obviously looking back, I told him not to. And, um, but I would hang out with him and he lived with all these guys in this house, they all went to Penn and, um. So I none of them knew I like had hooked up with him really or that they told me. So I was just like a girl that hung out with all these guys. So like they all would hit on me and right. stuff. So I just started hooking up with one of the other friends. But it was weird because I was so into him, you know, and it was like because I was pissed. I was like, what the fuck? And you're like bringing her here when I'm here. Yeah. All this stuff. But looking back, 100 percent my responsibility. <laughs> like, yeah, I totally did that. And then I did end up hooking up with the other. There was like I got a floor. There was a floor in their house that I hooked up with. <laughs> I didn't fuck them, but. I, but I, I, mean, I only fucked one of them. But that guy, I fucked him for a long time. I, after he broke up with his girlfriend, he was like my in betweeny. Mm, I love in betweenies. <laughs> oh, I have an Uber issue here. I want to talk about and see if you guys have had this experience too. Okay, so I've been getting Uber Eats or uh, Postmates. And I get the priority, right? Where you get it, so you just know it's coming from your house. Or I get a lot of soup, okay? I don't want things getting cold. Right, so it's th their, your house is their first stop. Right, not so their you gotta third. come, yeah, you can't go. Yeah. But what they do is they're doing four different apps. So your priority on that app, but then mm. they don't know that you can see them driving. So I'm watching them drive, get so close to my house, then drive to West Hollywood. I'm like, hello? And then I'll call like this one guy. I was like, can you just come back? I'm a big tipper. Like, just get my food to me. I, okay. I got a priority because I have to leave. Mm -hmm. Like I need it, you know, and you pay extra. It's only like I don't know four dollars extra. Because there's or something. caviar, there's Grubhub, there's yes. all the different. Wait, ones. what right. did they say? You and they go, oh, oh, they don't know that you can see them. So I just want to let you guys know, we can see you, and you're. I don't know how to get you in trouble because you can't. It's like a robot. <laughs> talking to. But the guy was like, and I still want to tip. I don't want to like not tip people. So I gave this guy a tip, and he goes, I don't understand why you're so mad at me. I had another order. I go on another app. Do you understand? Yeah. You were, and it's so weird because they always are so close to your house when they get the call. It's like. Just drop it. Just come the one minute. It It'll out. be one minute away. And then it's like in 30 minutes, your food's going to get there. Well, that or especially we sucks if you're pretty hangry. Because one minute to 30 minutes is a, is a, is a long I fucking wait. But you already waited your the whole time. your sugar has dropped. You already you're gonna waited You're going to need those the smelling time. salts. Well, now we have the smelling salts to get through my, my Postmates traumatic stress disorder. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a hot take. I don't want a lover to tell me he's proud of me. Mm. Why? Because I've been yearning for so long to I hear that from. I thought I've been urinated on. I swear to God, I thought you were going to say that. I, I do have <laughs> been urinated too. on. We know this. The reason I don't want a man to say he's proud of me is because it feels like something I've been wanting to hear from my parents mm. for so long. And then so it turns like, if, familiar. Yeah, I'm like, I, if someone says they're proud of me, I'm like, wait, do I want to fuck you anymore? You, 
you just turned into you know my ideal parent this is the crack in the darkness we're seeing here this is cool yeah that's interesting i (sighs) definitely papa Actually, what's so crazy is I literally asked Dave last night if he was proud of me for how far I've come, and he explained my success the funniest way. He said, it's not like you were here and went here. It's like you were – it's how low you were. He's like, you were (laughs) down here, and now you're here. And I'm like, that's true. You know what they call him? What? A real hype man. Yeah. <laughs> That's a hype man. Because for Dave, just imagine it's like, and you, Do you know. Do he's proud of me? <laughs> <laughs> Should we ask? When I met Dave, I was sharing a studio apartment with a Oh, woman. my God. She had a shit I'm going to call Bobby and ask him if he's proud of me. Yes. Ask him Bobby. I bet he is. Too. And then my I'll pussy will Tom. go dry is what's going to happen, right? I, that is so We'll weird. wet it up. We'll get it wet again. Thank you. We'll tell you that you're I'm nothing. imagining me taking those, those hard bananas and just... Nah, nah. Hello? Sweetie? Uh-huh. What? Are you proud of me? Yeah. Oh, that's anticlimactic. Well, no, ask me again. Are you proud of me? <laughs> <laughs> ask him, is he proud of all of us? Are you proud of Esther and Annie? Oh, God, that's a hard one. <laughs> but Bobby, wait, can I give you a context? I- in context, go yeah. Ahead. Do you remember when I when I was in the office of the comedy store like four years ago, telling you I was living in my car, and you were like, "Oh my god, you're broke. What's wrong with you? You need a podcast. Are you proud of me now?" Yeah, but I didn't. I don't. I, that never happened. Oh. <laughs> well, wait, Bobby anyway, knew no, me. I, I'm proud of you know Esther. I thought she was gonna die years ago, <laughs> just because I just thought when I looked at her, I thought she has no survival skills whatsoever. <laughs> this, this one's gonna just wither away. But she kind of made it. She's still around. Annie, I didn't even think was human, but it turns out she is. So that's a win. <laughs> Esther's survivor on, skills I, is making you think she doesn't have survival skills. Yeah, you, you're you are being recorded, sweet. Why oh, you call me, baby? Get home. I got to get to the Enterprise rental. Okay. Bye. Love you. Bye. Bye. Quick. I've got to get a rental. <laughs> you guys, spring training is coming up. We're gonna go to a baseball game. Okay. okay. All right. I like baseball games. Yeah, and you get to cheer, Esther. That's what you're good at. What? Annie, make the sound. Charge. Charge. Ow, ow. The credit card. <laughs> How <laughs> embarrassing it would it be, though, if you and I tried to start the wave and no one followed? It would be perfect. Life <laughs> is for those moments. How many more times would we try? The whole time. The whole thing is going to be us hopefully getting rejected. Yeah, I know. I was going to say that. We got to try good. to get on the Jumbotron. Yeah. Kissing. <gasps> Triple kiss. Oh, Kiss cam. Wait, also a fake. We should have like a fake big fight. Like pretend like we're screaming at each other. Throwing well, here, here's how other. that'll be believable. If you're wearing like a Cubs hat and I'm a Dodger fan and just sit three, three seats away from me. Okay. Oh, uh, this is what happened like- on the airplane. <laughs> 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 did you guys sit together when, on the way to New York? Or wait, no, we didn't go together. No. Did you guys sit together? No, she's no. not next to Blake on the way there. Oh, that's right. right. Oh, I my God. Blakey boy. Thank God. <laughs> Carlos, if you had cockblocked that. <laughs> oh, I want to say something. A guy wrote me with a very interesting question, and I guess I'll just um, give you the gist of it, is that he doesn't have a foot fetish, but he likes girls with, what are those socks that only come to you? The no-show socks. But the color of the socks have to be a very specific color. They can't be color block. They can't have color like past like midfoot or something like that. So what do we call that? Is that just a sock fetish then? Yeah, very, very specific, specific sock fetish. Like, like those no-show socks just came out. Wait, I should. <laughs> His fetish was just created. Wait, and I, also that's maybe. so. They, I can't imagine a foot looking silly. Okay, here, let me just read it then. I'm curious what your opinion or take on it on this is. Um, I heard at the end of the latest episode you guys talking about men who have foot fetishes. I think I do, but it's only feet and socks. Also, it's only certain types of socks. So like a bare foot or bare feet do absolutely nothing for me, but I find it very attractive or cute when a woman wears plain colored ankle or no-show socks. Any solid color besides black or gray. So no black or gray. I also enjoy it if it has a brand logo on it, like Nike or... Oh, he's yeah. a fancy one. I don't mind if socks have a simple pattern on them either, but I hate capital H A T E when socks have different color toe or heels. So my oh, Belega socks. I think those socks are the cutest are, socks that have like a little. I, he finds it repulsive and mid calf socks this. or knee high or anything else. I don't remotely 
find attractive. I'm inspired by how specific. Right. So weird. It is. It's like you can really have whatever you want. And in that's life. like so easy to like his wife or girlfriend can just like very easily just give him his well, dreams. Well, this inspires me for an OnlyFans because not only would I not have to show my toes, I would just have to wear plain fucking no-show socks. But why are we doing it? Because it costs fans. me nothing to go. Yeah. <sighs> you know what I mean? And I feel like you could sell those stinkers for quite a bit too. <laughs> I do really wonder if we had an OnlyFans and it was not mainstream pornographic, but subtle, sexy, like Kalila's feet in cute socks. Yeah, I guess that's like a thing. Why my feet? Yeah. Um, she's the she's a sought after. Well, it's just because be... I won't let them have it. Yeah, that's why. But I think feet are like they get you from point A to point B and I don't need them to be pretty. I just want them to work. Okay, I have a I have an idea. I just For it's function. not about feet. Yes. Listen, it's not about feet, but I just from I just got inspired. Can we please make let's write a song and make a music video and it's choreographed. I'm obviously in. Let's do it. I've been in Can, since Will Bobby yesterday. help us? Yeah. With let's the song a, part? Yeah. Yeah, like he'll just lay down some tracks. Yes. And then let's like write the lyrics and everything. And I'm sure we can get someone to make our voices sound not bad and yeah. And post. Yeah. We don't even need that. Let's release a, a Trash single? Tuesday <laughs> hit single. You know, that is, I feel like part of the inspo in my mind for our show being called Trash Tuesday. Do you guys remember going up New Music Tuesday? That was like a huge thing in my life. Like Best Buy would have the new albums come out on oh, Tuesday. Wow. No one? No Music one after Big drops school? on a Tuesday. Wow. Um, Carlos, do we have any oh, fan oh, really questions? Went, wow. Oh, wait. I wanted to say we were talking about unsolicited advice, I think the last episode or maybe yeah. the episode before. I actually heard... Okay, so I said that it's like it's like almost a... It's like Form a of judgment, criticism. Criticism. Yeah. However, in the the music... The the Baz Luhrmann Sunblock song, mm. he says that unsolicited advice is a form of nostalgia that that person is like going... like I don't remember the exact line. Will you look it up? We just look up nostalgia but, and Baz Luhrmann. But it's sweeter is what it's you're It's like saying. sweet. And then I was like, because I was, I remember I had Duncan Trussell on my solo podcast back in the day. And he was, we were talking about when his wife was pregnant, like all these older women would like want to give her advice and touch. And it was like, it was like annoying to them, you know? And I think a lot of pregnant women have mm. that feeling, right? But then I was like, think about it though, like how sweet that is too. It's like they went through this thing and they like want to remember, their remember time. and like share it with you. So I was like, I want to think about it that way rather than it being mm. criticism. Is that why everyone is always asking me when is my wedding? <laughs> is, are they just thinking about their own? Because that would make me feel so much better. Well, maybe they Possibly. want, I mean, probably. Are you? That's what you're thinking about when you ask people, right? I don't know. I don't you're care like, about I've weddings. I've never thought about it. I Todd wants like a really nice wedding and I have no I just don't care. I would about love weddings. to go to Vegas. I feel like I wanna I wanna get same. married by Elvis. I'm courtroom bitch. Yeah. Courtroom, courthouse. Mm -hmm. <laughs> courtroom. Yeah. Courthouse, yeah. Well, courthouse. Some of my most like amazing memories at weddings were my friend Abby and Pete Van Leeuwen, Van Leeuwen ice cream, the ones that did like oh, the we should get some. I love Van Leeuwen. Pete, give us some money and we'll promote you for real. Uh, I'll just this take is one a free freebie. Scoop. <laughs> this is one freebie. <laughs> She's like after first one free scoop. No, but remember when they had the, like the macaroni and cheese kind of stuff. Anyway, mm. but um, so their wedding was just we all went to college of Santa Fe together. Dearly departed college, went out of business twice and then burned to the ground. Um, but we went. They got married at the courthouse with like you know maybe 15, 20 of us. And then um, we like went up to the cross of the martyrs, which is just like this cross up like a little hike, and it's this beautiful cross. And um, People, they were drinking champagne and stuff. And then they rented this like really cool Airbnb and everyone just did mushrooms and had like the most amazing. It was just like such a fun wedding. That sounds really fun. And it wasn't and like the focus wasn't on the weird like like it was beautiful. It was Because like, I will sweet say I don't like I've been to several weddings and big ones are never a core memory for me. Right. My favorite wedding that I attended was of my aunt from Germany, her and her dude flew to Vegas and we were in a chapel. I was in like me and my sister and all of us were in club attire, mm -hmm. like just really hoe outfits. And I couldn't have cried harder. We yeah. were all bawling our eyes off. It was so, that's a core memory for me. Everything else, every other wedding, I'm like eh, transactional, yeah. looks too big. Where's the fucking bride? Well, like the love is like this small little part of it. Right. And then the rest is, I used to be really embarrassed. Don't like, be afraid to make some sounds, Esther. Thanks, is it rude? I need a snack. No, snack Esther, it up, babe. Listen, we've got we've come so far since the gum chewing. We're all okay, okay? <laughs> um, Carlos, do we have a, a, <laughs> a question? Don't put on your headphones. Oh, okay. 
Hey ladies, uh, I'll keep it nice, short, and simple. I was just wondering if you guys could give me your best. The Esther. Oh short. yeah. Oh my God. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. No. Keep up the good work. That's on the live show, Slut bitch. Are you serious? Yeah. Peace. March March thirtieth, six p.m. Pacific time. Come to it. Momenthouse dot com slash. Trash Tuesday. No, Trash like, Tuesday. Well, why is that the voice note that Carlos pulled? Like, are you because that to is get... so annoying? He's sexualizing us. Carlos, is that what you want? You want to hear us all make that sound? I'll do it for you for free, no, thought... Carlos. Thank you. Carlos. On the live, <laughs> bitch. Shut your yeah. shut your esophagus or whatever that sound comes from. <laughs> shut, close the from hole. Clamp it. April. Okay, next one. Hi guys, uh, my name is April, and I am. Oh, I thought I meant from the month. If you believe in ghosts, um, psychics, mediums, especially the people that say they've been fucked by ghosts, mm. what are you thinking? What are your thoughts? Okay. What are your stories? I'm just curious. I, I've been I've been fucked then ghosted. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I don't ever want to be haunted by a ghost, but if a ghost were to feel just like couldn't resist couldn't hold back. I'd just like to be sexualized by a ghost, I think. Sure. In my sleep, though. Make me come, though, okay? Yeah, I have make a come. very... Don't stop till you make me come. Hard... Don't stop till you make her come. Hard and fast policy here, which is that I've always believed since I was little... That you're a dog. That ghosts like me. I believe in spirit guides. <laughs> hey, guys. Uh, fuck, Mary kill. Mm-mm. I think that's it, guys. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's it for today. I agree. <laughs> and we're not mad at the questions. We're mad at the question picker. <laughs> <laughs> so Carlos would be killed. <laughs> you guys, thank you so much for listening today. And we love you. We will see you at the live show on March 30th. Go to momenthouse.com slash trash Tuesday for tickets. And don't forget to subscribe, comment, do all the things. We want to grow with you. We'll see you guys next week. Bye.